This is part 63 of AngularCRAD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss creating a fake online REST API. First, let's understand what is REST. As you might already know, REST stands for Representational State Transfer and it's an architectural pattern or style for creating an API that uses HTTP as its communication method. This REST architectural pattern specifies a set of constraints that a system should adhere to. Some of these constraints are client-server constraints, stateless constraint, cacheable constraint, uniform interface constraint, etc. We discuss these constraints in part 1 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. Let's quickly recap the uniform interface constraint. As the name implies, this uniform interface constraint defines the interface between the client and the server. To understand the uniform interface constraint, we need to understand what a resource is and the HTTP verbs get, put, post, delete, etc. Now, in the context of a REST API, a resource typically represents a data entity like customer, employee, product, etc. If we take a look at the Angular project that we've been working with so far in this video series, one of the resources that we want to work with in the context of this application is an employee object. In addition to the resource, we have the HTTP verbs get, put, post, delete that we send with each request to the server to tell the API what to do with the resource. Now, each resource in an API is identified by a specific URI. As you know, URI stands for Uniform Resource Identifier. So, as you can see in this table, the URI for slash employees identifies the employee resource. So, this URI along with the HTTP verb get, put, post or delete that is sent with each request to the server will tell the API what to do with this employee resource. For example, if we issue a GET request to this URI for slash employees, the API should return us the list of all employees. In the URI, if we include the ID of one of the employees and we issue the DELETE request, then the API should delete that specific employee. Now, what we want to do in this video is create this REST API. Depending on the server-side technology you use, there are many frameworks that we can use to build a REST API. For example, if your server-side technology is Microsoft.NET, then you can use WCF or ASP.NET Web API to create a REST API. Since this is an Angular course and to stay focused on it, let's create a fake REST API. In our upcoming videos, we'll perform all the CRUD operations against this fake REST API. Now, to quickly create a fake REST API, I'm going to make use of the JSON server available at this GitHub page. The first step is obviously to install the JSON server. Here's the command for that. Let's execute this npm command from Visual Studio Code Integrated Terminal. If you don't have Integrated Terminal open, click on View and then select this option npm install hyphen g to install it globally json dash server installation complete now let's start the server here is the command json dash server dash dash watch and we want to watch db.json file we'll discuss what this file is in just a bit there we go we have our API up and running at this URL, localhost colon 3000. Notice out of the box, this JSON server has these three resources identified by these three URIs, slash post, slash comments, slash profile. And then here are the HTTP verbs. Let me zoom this in a bit. The HTTP verbs are get, post, put, patch, delete. Now when we navigate to slash post, we see the list of posts. Similarly, when we navigate to slash comments, we see the comments. Now, the question that comes to our mind is, where is this data coming from? Well, this is the command that we have executed to start the JSON server. So, this command has created this file db.json within our project folder. So, if we take a look at Visual Studio Code, notice within the project folder, we have this file db.json. So, the data that we see in the browser is coming from this file right here. Now, in our application, we don't want to work with posts, comments, and profile. We want to work with employees. 
So within this JSON file, let's include the employees that we want. So the first thing that I'm going to do is change the key here to employees. And we don't need comments and profiles, so let's delete both of them. Now our employee data is present within our employee service. Notice within the service file, we've got these three employee objects. Now one requirement of this db.json file is that the object properties must be within double quotes and any string data must also be in double quotes. If we use single quotes, it doesn't work. So what I have done is copied all these three objects into a notepad and then included the property names in double quotes and all the string values also in double quotes. Let's copy these three objects and paste them within our db.json file. Let's save our changes. Now if we navigate to localhost colon 3000, notice the URI now is for slash employees and when we navigate to this URI, we see our three employee objects. Now if we want a specific employee, we specify the ID of that employee. There we go, we've got employee with ID too. Now, if you want, you can use tools like Fiddler, Postman, etc. to test this fake API for all the CRUD operations, that is create, read, update and delete. In our upcoming videos, we're going to make use of this fake REST API to understand how an Angular application communicates with server-side RESTful services. Thank you for watching and have a great day.